My name is Jairus. This is Jairus of all. Welcome to building the Iron Man forearm rocket launcher thingy part two. Everything in this project is going to be built around the rockets. These are C's and these are A10's. These are what I'm going to use for the rockets. The launcher tube is going to be small and I'm not sure if I'm going to use PVC pipe or steel or I don't know. I'm not sure yet. And I did figure out what space age material I'm going to use for the fins. Water bottles are super flexible, but they're resilient. Like this will go back into shape if it gets bent over. So I'm going to use this to make the fins because I need spring loaded fins because the fins can't stick out because it's such a tiny little area. And then I cast some nose cones and I need to make more to attach to the rocket motors. And I'd like to use these big ones, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to use these because they might not fit with fins on them inside the tubes that I'm going to use, that I might use. I don't really know what I'm doing. We'll find out when I get to it. Let's make some rockets. This worked great to cut it at first. It made it really easy, but it also made the edges round because it melts it at the same time. So I'm just gonna use this to cut them out now that I have the bottles chopped apart. I put some little guidelines on the rocket engines and now I'm going to glue these fins on using a very small amount of super glue. We'll see how this works. When you're gluing these on, don't make the mistake that I made and forget to look at which direction the nozzle is facing and glue the fins on the wrong way because you'll have to rip them back off again like I just had to do. It works. I can wrap them the whole way around and squish them flat to the rocket motor. It's kind of difficult to do, but I can do it and they stay there and they come back out. So I made these because nose cones from Estes are expensive. I made molds out of the silicone rubber stuff from Hobby Lobby and uh, then I got some casting resin and I made nose cones and it's so much cheaper to do it this way. So now I can make all the nose cones I want and it takes hardly any resin at all. So now I'm gonna trim off the extra here at the back and these nose cones are gonna get glued directly onto the rocket right there, itty bitty tiny rockets. Itty bitty rocket. Now I just gotta glue these things on and go test them. Almost ready for testing. I'm just gonna throw some primer on, that way I can see the fins if they fall off when these things hit the ground. Cause I'm not gonna string test them. I'm gonna do something else. It might work, it might not. It's an idea. So I'm gonna stick this in the tube and I'm gonna whip the tube so that the rocket flies out and we'll see how it flies. Let's try the one with triangle fins. Lost one. Here we go. That didn't work at all. That one flew awesome. It even buried in the ground. That wobbled a lot when it flew just now. So I'm thinking, not this fin design. Well, it flopped all over the place, but it lost a fin on exit. That one flopped around like a shot duck. Ready. Straight as an arrow. This one just had a great flight, and this shape of fin worked. I'll leave these fins on this rocket. I'll switch one of the other ones to have these fins, but curving in, and then I'll do the same thing with them curved out and curved in with this style of fin, and then I'll shoot them with their own power, and we'll see how they do. Before I glue these fins on, I wanna talk about something when you're building or working on stuff, and I like to call it the path of least resistance. And I'm going to use screwdrivers as an example. Now this one's old and beat up and I used it as a pry bar. You can see it's bent. 
if you look at that tip, can you see it? That tip is super chewed up and nasty, right? So if you're trying to take a screw out and your screwdriver isn't working and it feels like it's gonna round it out, instead of just trying harder and rounding the screw out and making the job substantially more difficult, the first thing that you should do is check the tip of your screwdriver and check to see if it's screwed up. If it's screwed up, it's not gonna work. You wanna try to get a screwdriver. Can you see that one? But it's relatively sharp still and new. That'll make your ability to take the screw out increase drastically. Now, if you still can't get the screw out, instead of just trying to loosen it, you know, try tightening it. And sometimes that'll break the corrosion or the seizing that's occurred that's not allowing you to get the screw out. And then if that doesn't work, you go to the next step, which is putting, oh, uh, I can't remember the name. Easy grip. You put easy grip on the tip of your screwdriver. It's this liquid that has uh, little shards of silicate or something in it. Anyway, it makes the tip grip more. Try that. If that doesn't work and it is actually starting to round the screw out, uh, that's pretty much your last step as far as just using a screwdriver to take it out. So the next step that I like to do is to take a jeweler's file and file a flat blade slot in the top of the screw as long as it's raised head and not sunken in. And then you use a flat head and that will help get it out. And if that still doesn't work, then you drill a hole in it and use an easy out and take it out that way. And if that doesn't work, you just have to drill the screw out and replace the fastener on the other side or retap the hole, which is a huge pain in the butt. But another thing that you can use in there is if it's attaching two panels together, remember to twist the panel if you can with the screw. It'll help turn it out. So those are the steps that you use for screwdrivers. Now, why am I talking about taking screws out? Well, these fins kept falling off. So instead of, you know, trying to take a screw out with a garbage screwdriver and then rounding the screw out and then going right to easy out and potentially breaking that off in the screw, having to drill the screw out, all of those problems that occur with that. This is the same case. I immediately thought, oh, well, I'll just use a different adhesive, something stronger to make these fins stick to the rockets. But that's jumping past all the other steps, right? So when you're working with adhesives, if they're not working, there's different things that you can do to make them work better, like sanding. So since these are super smooth, I'm gonna sand the area that gets glued to the rocket body and that should give better adhesion on the fin because it's definitely sticking to the rocket body. So I had to shave off the excess super glue with one of these things uh, so that I could put the new fins on. So now I'm gonna sand these so that I have better adhesion on the plastic, hopefully. And if that doesn't work, then I'll step up to a better adhesive. But always take the path of least resistance. The easiest solution is the one that you should try next and make sure you aren't skipping things because you could be making your life harder when it doesn't have to be. All right, let's put fins on. All right, new fins, a little bit of paint and then we'll test it. I'm putting my money on this one. I think she's gonna do well. So I modified my launcher tube that I was using to throw them to actually shoot them. And I cut this hole in it so that when the rocket sits inside, the igniter will stick out and that way I can connect the wires to it and set it off. And then I also ground off the paint right there so that I can weld this plate on so that I can mount it in a vise and adjust the angle and shoot it from inside here instead of just throwing it. So yeah, I'm gonna weld this on and then we're gonna shoot rockets, woo! It's time to fire these little suckers and I'm gonna shoot them in order from the one that I think is gonna do worst to one that I think is gonna do best. So I think this one will be the worst right here. I think that one will be second worst, third and fourth. because so I think the curved in fins will do better. I also think that some of these might not even leave the tube because they don't have enough force to push it out because they fit pretty tight when those fins are all wrapped up. So let's try it and see what happens. <laughs> well, it came out of the tube. 
the nine volt that I brought to set these off with didn't work. So I pulled the battery out of my phone and used that instead. Remember also, if you're doing rocket stuff, pick up all your garbage. Reusable nose cone. Try number two. This one has the thicker fins that aren't triangles that are curved outwards. So let's see how this one does. Awesome. Next one, triangle fins curved in. Triangle fins suck. This one though, I hope does the best. And this is the one that I thought might do the best. So let's find out right now. Backyard rocket surgery, take four. Got all my nose cones back so I can reuse these, but I'm probably gonna scale up to bigger motors for the actual launcher that I'm gonna build. So subscribe to catch the rest of this build series. Next time I'm gonna do some of the stuff to try to get this thing uh, like the actual actuation part built that'll lift the rocket launcher up out of your arm or off of your arm rather not out of it because it won't be inside your arm but uh, yeah subscribe to catch more of these build videos and I'm not going to use this on my channel I'm collaborating with the hacksmith and we're gonna go up to Canada and use it up there building the movement mechanism next time back, back, back from the dead <laughs>